Hello guys, in this video we will create a set of buttons that will let us change the recording length of clips on the fly. You know, by default, the clips themselves have unlimited recording time. So if I go to the edit page, it says length and set. I could manually set these to one bar and this would record one bar of an audio source or you could set it to any length but what happens if you have a dedicated group of clips that you want to keep flexible so if you decide to record some drums some shakers some other stuff you want them to have different length you know during improvising it, it can be really useful if these things are flexible so by default if you record into these there is no limitation basically you can finish recording whenever you want but what happens if you want to use some set values that you can find under the tempo section of loopy pro you see, it says 1 bar, 2 bars, 4 bars, 8 bars, 16 bars, and so on. What happens if you want to use these? First of all, if uh, we make this orange group, for example, a dedicated drum section, I want to go to the settings of these clips, and you see orange group settings under that menu element I can set up this orange group differently compared to the other clips of my workflow so if I go to orange group settings and I go to recording settings I can turn on auto count out that would make count out quantization jump to master that way the orange group now will listen to these settings 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So, if I want to record into these clips, I can set it up or I can just leave it to one. But since we are creative and I'm making this video on purpose, basically, after making this canvas bigger, I will add some buttons. At first, I will only add one and I will copy this later on. So if I go to this button, you can see all these different gestures you can use. It's fantastic that basically one widget could be used in many, many ways for different functions. But for now, I just want to go to this one, press. I'm going to look for my session actions. And this one says set master length. So if I go to set and I leave the value of this at one, this will actually change the value of this setting to one whenever I press it. So imagine it's on two now. I will press it. It goes to one. All right. So let me just copy this one twice and I will change these so they will have different values set. So this one will be set to two bars and this one will be set to four bars. Yep. And actually I'm going to rename these to one bar. This one's going to be two bars. And the third one, the last one, will be four bars. So, let's see what happens. I press two, it jumps to two. I press four, it jumps to four. So now, when I'm pressing these things, they will change the master length, but this setting 
will only affect the orange group because I want it to be so. All right, so you can, of course, map these buttons to your MIDI controller, but for now I'm only gonna press it. I have this hammerhead drum machine and I chose this because you see it has four different patterns programmed. So if I'm taking four of these patterns, it's gonna be four bars. So I will be able to show you how does it look like. So I press one bar. Let me see this. You see, we recorded one bar. In the mixer, it's muted. I recommend you watching my previous video, which is about using audio units that are pattern based. I created this mute uh, action because uh, if I play this, basically, if it wasn't there, you could hear the recorded loop and the, dr the drum machine at the same time and it would cause some distortion in the sound. So, for now, I'm gonna delete this and I set it to two bars. Now, if I record, it has recorded two bars. And just so you can see, I'm not cheating, four bars of drumming is there. So I hope this video was useful. Try to experiment with your ways of doing it. I see you in the next one.